Piston to valve clearance is exactly what it sounds like. It's the clearance between the piston crown and the valves. Without sufficient piston to valve clearance, you are at risk of engine damage from piston and valve contact. Common results range from a noise and marks on the piston or valve if contact is very light, to bent valves, or even ruining the top end if a valve breaks off and gets smashed around inside of the cylinder before the engine stops. Most piston to valve clearance problems occur between 20 degrees before top dead center at the end of the exhaust stroke and 20 degrees after top dead center at the beginning of the intake stroke. As the exhaust stroke is ending, the exhaust valve is closing and the piston is approaching top dead center. If timing and clearances are not correct or if valve motion is not controlled, the piston will catch the valve and make contact. The intake valve begins to open while the piston is near top dead center and chases the piston down the bore. Again, if timing or clearances are off, contact may occur. I would suggest using 50 thousandths of an inch as a minimum clearance on the intake side and 80 thousandths of an inch as a minimum clearance on the exhaust side. You may be able to push the limits and use less clearance, but those should be good safe numbers for a typical street scooter engine. Another potential problem is contact from misalignment of the valves and the valve reliefs in the piston crown or a lack of radial clearance. Valve reliefs do little good if they aren't positioned so that the valve heads align with them or if they aren't large enough to accommodate the valve diameter. Ideally, valves should be centered with the reliefs with a 50 thousandths of an inch radial clearance between the edge of the valve and the valve relief. If you need help checking any of these clearances, I have a couple of videos showing the procedures. The clay method is probably the most widely used and allows you to check radial clearance easily and gives you a better visual of what's happening at the point of minimum clearance. The dial indicator method requires more tools and time, but it may provide a bit more accurate depth clearance numbers. Piston to valve clearance numbers can change from things like installing a cam with more lift or duration, altering cam timing, using head or base gaskets of a different thickness, milling the cylinder or head, or swapping the cylinder, piston, or head, which can cause misalignment or a difference in size of the valves and reliefs or changes to deck height. Many people never bother to check piston to valve clearance when building an engine, but a little extra effort can help you avoid turning your shiny new parts into a pile of scrap metal. If you find that you have insufficient piston to valve clearance, there are ways to change it. You can use thicker or additional base gaskets, or a thicker head gasket to increase clearance. This is the quickest and easiest way, but it's not without consequence. The downside to this approach is that you could significantly lower the engine's compression ratio and change the squish clearance, both of which may negatively impact performance. I chose to cut or enlarge valve reliefs in the piston when I needed more clearance on a few occasions and would recommend considering this method. Material removed from the piston crown will lower the compression ratio, but usually less than changing gaskets, and it doesn't change other engine characteristics like thicker gaskets do. There are other methods, like changing cam timing or swapping out parts, but using gaskets or creating or altering valve reliefs are good options that most people can do without much or any additional expense. Here's a video about cutting valve reliefs. If this video was helpful or interesting, please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe for more. Good luck with your projects, and thanks for watching.